When was your last I got a get the hell out of here moment? Was in New Orleans interviewing for a job that required driving a company vehicle 10 hours a day that had valuable specialty equipment. Interview is going great and we get to the part about pay. Guy goes we can offer you 10 an hour. A big smile came over my face and I leaned over to shake his hand. He thought I was agreeing. I was telling him bye. Popers pays around 15 an hour here. My mom was content with living with bedbugs, a creepy 50 year old man who might pay our bills as well as his kids and our cousins all in a hitty mobile home that she hadn't been making payments on. It was in such bad shape, it wasn't even worth repossessing. I could never have any time to myself, I was always surrounded by bratty kids while constantly scratching at the bite marks the bugs left. I'd go to bed at night wearing sweats with socks on hot nights just to try and keep the damn bugs off me. It didn't work. When I was around 14, I went to go live with my grandma. Of course, that made me a backstabber in the eyes of my mom, but she's not relevant in my life anymore. Edit. Obligatory I didn't expect this to blow up so much. Thanks for the gold, silver, and support. I pulled into a gas station to fill up my car at 4am on the way to work. The station was well lit and actually pretty busy, so I didn't feel unsafe. I pulled up next to a pump, go out, and just when I put the nozzle in I heard someone trying to get my attention. I turned and it was a guy who had been leaning against the wall of the station when I pulled in. There was a van nearby him. He asked if I could call his girlfriend to come pick him up. I called one number, voice mailbox full. He gave me a second number, mailbox also full. Then he asked if I had jumper cable and if I could give me a jump. I agreed thinking the van he was nearby was his vehicle. Then, after I agree, he tells me the story of how he got there. According to him, his car had broken down at another gas station up the street. He said it was closed, so he couldn't get any help, so he borrowed a bike from someone and rode it down to this gas station. Then he went into the gas station to leave the bike there. As soon as he started walking away, my brain started racing and pointing out all the things that didn't add up about this story. First, all I could imagine in those voice mailboxes were a bunch of people going your boyfriend is stuck at the gas station. Then, I thought about how in the hell would he legitimately borrow a bike from someone at a closed gas station in the middle of the night in the middle of winter. At that point, I decided it was time to get the out of there. Thankfully, I hadn't pumped any gas yet, so I quickly put it back on the pump, got into my car, and tore out of there. I actually felt a little bad, because what if he actually needed help, but then I reminded myself about him borrowing a bike in that situation, how he was trying to get me to a dark, secluded secondary location. This dude was absolutely trying to rob slash murder me. I was visiting London and just got out of sports bar by myself at 3am, drunk as it. I decide to walk from the bar near Leicester Square to my hotel near King's Cross despite not knowing exactly where I am or how to get to the hotel. I start walking in a direction and within a minute I'm walking down a rather wide shopping street when I see two bold guys coming the other way, both pretty much built brick hit houses and looking like they want to start hit. They hadn't spotted me, yet but one guy suddenly walks to the side of the street and just flat out punches a steel grate in front of a shop in trance as hard as he can. I pretty much did a straight 180, double timed it back to the bar, and asked the nice bouncers to get me a cab. Cab drops me off in front of the hotel and I go to bed without getting the hit kicked out of me first. I go to school in Poughkeepsie. One time my friends and I were walking along some train tracks by the river on a foggy night, not smart. We could barely see 5 feet ahead, but we weren't afraid, because it was a popular hangout spot. All of a sudden we hear loud barking, and a ducking crackhead lunges out of the fog at us, barking like a dog. The fog around him cleared up, and we could see more druggies lying under some leaves by the side of the tracks, watching us and laughing. Never ran so fast, or came so close to hitting myself in my life. The guy that I met. College educated, handsome retro digs in Long Beach circa. Articulate, funny, packed a picnic for our blind date complete with cloth napkins. Went back to his place and the kitchen was a hoarder's dream, at least 6 full sets of dishes, dirty, sitting in neatly stacked piles everywhere. 
pots and pans, the same thing. Hundreds of dollars worth of iron cooker stacked on the floor, rusting. Instead of washing dishes he would buy more. Nope the duck out. This was like 5 years ago, I was 24 years old, got way too drunk at my local bar, and ended up going back to this guy's apartment. It was decorated by somebody's grandmother for sure, there were candelabras everywhere. He lit all of them, then sat me on the couch, and proceeded to go through all of these old family photo albums specifically looking at pictures of his siblings and cousins as children. No joke he was getting so hard, that I could see the album start moving up and down. Then he asked me if I had any pictures of when I was a child or my siblings when they were children. Never sobered up so fast and booked it right the f out of there. Edit because I got messages about drunk driving. This was in New York City. I walked 16 blocks through East Harlem and never felt so safe in my life. Oh boy I have another one. My ex best friend convinced me to go to a concert with her. I told her I couldn't because I had a long drive the next morning and didn't want to waste gas or go to bed too late and she said it was fine, she would drive and would get me home right after the concert. Went to the concert, it was fine. I was ready to go home but she told me she wanted to go to an after party with the band because her crush would be there. I agreed because she really wanted to get with this guy, the chances of it happening seemed high and I wanted her to be happy. Turns out the after party was at a decent hotel. Underage kids were straight up walking in with handles of alcohol, and it was really obvious what was going on. The receptionist was eyeing everyone but nobody gave a duck. My friend and I got to the room, and we were the only girls there. Around 40 drunk college guys and two girls both under 110 lbs. I'd never experienced being looked at like a juicy steak until that moment. I told her we had to go, but she was hellbent on staying with her crush. I couldn't convince her, so I called my mom, the most awkward phone conversation of my life, and had her pick me up. Turns out the receptionist called the cops soon after I left, and the party got broken up. I think some people got charged. My brother was diagnosed as a sociopath and went around wearing it like a badge of pride, saying sh** like I could really ducking kill you guys and not feel a smudge of guilt about it. Edit, because some people are getting confused, he was diagnosed with, and I apologize for not knowing which, either narcissistic personality disorder with antisocial tendencies or antisocial personality disorder with narcissistic tendencies. All that mattered to him though was tagged the term sociopath and psychopath came up when he googled this. He gets a new diagnosis just about every 3 to 6 months these days. Growing up he had at and generalized anxiety disorder, then he joined the marines and came out diagnosed with PTSD from boot camp, yet made fun of non-marines with PTSD, then it was bipolar disorder, then this, and now he's schizophrenic. We have no doctor given reason to suspect this, but my mom wonders if he might have some kind of brain tumor or something f with him. I'd lived in the same crap neighborhood for a couple years, and was living further into the worst of it at a weekly rent place. In prior years my car had been broken into, the house's garage had been broken into, I had some stuff stolen, I'd heard gunshots, but I'd never seen anything all that bad. At the weekly rental, we heard a dude shot dead in the lot next door. The police came knocking to interview neighbors, and everyone else had lived there longer, and refused to open the door in case of potential gang retaliation. It was a gang dispute according to later newspaper reports, but in that area it was usually safe to say anything involving guns was gang related. That was the ducking end of that. I found a place far enough outside the city that rent was still cheap, dealt with the long commute, and enjoyed the country. I was at a marketing recruitment presentation in college and this guy started talking about how we would be able to go to Disneyland and buy Ferraris if we just signed up to his exclusive elite program. We just had to make a small down payment right there in the auditorium and we shouldn't talk about it with friends or family because haters online had damaged the company's reputation. Edit, it was Amway, and the guy was Charlie Durso. <laughs> On the New York City subway I watched a grown man pull his pants down and use the support rod in the middle of the trainer's leverage to take a wicked steamy dump while making aggressive eye contact with me and a few other passengers. <laughs> Ducking subscribe to Reddit throne.
Ducking subscribe to Reddit Throne.